Hi, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, Jun. Jun is an interesting drink that uh, has kind of come into being. There's some, you know, as all these things, there's some kind of, uh, it's shrouded in mystery that, you know, the, t the Tibetan monks used to drink it and I don't know. But what we're shooting for here is something similar to kombucha that, you know, you make, you take your um, black tea sweetened with white sugar fermented with a scoby so you have that symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast and then you get something that hopefully is very probiotic and has a low amount of sugar so what I want to do is make kombucha but instead of using black tea I'm going to use green tea instead of using sugar I'm going to use honey and I think we're going to get a, a very different beverage from what I've read about Jean, it, it, I think it could be a viable option. My wife doesn't really like kombucha. You know, it, it's too sour, you know, the, the, car the carbonation's there, but the, 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 that, that kombucha is just, it's a little too vinegary, a little too yeasty. So, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and make some Jean. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that will tell you, oh, well, just take your kombucha scoby and you can make Jean if you just sort of slowly replace the, the black tea with green tea, slowly replace the white sugar with with honey. I don't think that's gonna work. I've got my kombucha scoby, here. My hands are clean, right? I've got a scoby, here's, here's a scoby we can use, but this isn't the scoby that we want. This is a scoby that has been, you know, living in a, in a black tea and, and sugar culture. That's, that's really not where we're going with this. So, I actually broke down and bought this on Amazon. It's a, you know, search on Amazon. I got some links below. If you want to buy one of these, I've got a link below if you want to grab one of these. They're pretty inexpensive. It's like, I don't know, $15, I think. But this is a Jun Scoby that has basically been raised on living with honey and green tea. So we're going to make some green tea. We're going to sweeten it with honey. We're going to put in the the starter here, and we're gonna make jun. So, what do you need to make jun? Basically, it's the same as kombucha. Think about the kombucha recipe that we do. We do a gallon of water, eight tea bags, and a cup of sugar. Add the, add the scoby, wait a week, and then, you know, do your second ferment, or just drink it that way. So, with jun, pretty much the same thing. We can do a gallon of water, a cup of honey, and then we'll use green tea bags for the, for the tea. So I'm gonna start with a, with a strong green tea. I like the antioxidant properties of the green tea, so I wanna take advantage of that. I've seen recipes where they do like two green tea bags to a gallon of, of water, and I don't, I don't think that's enough. I don't think that's gonna be really enough to do what I wanna do. So what we're gonna do is eight green tea bags. We'll measure out a cup of honey and then a gallon of boiling water. So here, let's get started. So basically what we need to do is we need to make green tea, let it cool because we're gonna use raw honey. I wanna use raw honey, there's a lot of enzymes, there's a lot of pollen, which is very um, immunogenic for you and, you and will help with your allergies. So there's a lot of really good stuff in raw honey. Try to buy some honey that's locally raised. So, I mean, this um, beekeeper's about 10 miles from here, which is awesome, so I know that as I'm drinking this honey, even if it's fermented, I know that there's a lot of stuff in this that is probably making my nose run and making me sneeze at times. So by drinking this in my, in my jun, that I'm basically taking in a lot of stuff in my honey that I can digest slowly and therefore build up a, a, build up a resistance to it. That, so when hay fever comes around and I've been eating a lot of local honey, I'm not gonna have as much of a problem as I did when before I started eating this local honey. What I've got here is my gallon pot. We're gonna, seems like all these kombucha recipes are about a gallon. So I do a gallon and I, I measure it out with a, with a big cup. So this is, this is four cups, so, or a quart. So what I did was I filled up four, four cups of water and boiled it. To, to that I'll add my eight tea bags. And then I'll let this brew for about five minutes. You know, I didn't even boil this. This, temp this water came up to about 180 degrees or so, and that's about all I really want. I don't want to, you know, put my green tea in boiling water. Just, you know, hot water. Just, 
about 180 degrees is really good for green tea. So we're gonna let this steep for about five minutes. We'll pluck out the tea bags and then we'll go from there. All right, so it's been about five minutes. I've been brewing my green tea in a quart of water. This is a gallon pot. I actually went ahead and, and measured this pot out so I'd know exactly how much a gallon it would be. So I've got a quart of water and my green tea bags. They've had a good chance to steep in there. I'm gonna get my tea bags out. And then what I want to do is chill this down and dilute it to a gallon. So I've got three quarts of ice water here. And then once this is chilled and, and diluted, I can go ahead and add my honey. Now I don't want to add my raw honey to hot tea. That's basically defeating the point of, of the raw honey. You know, I've got all that the enzymes and, and you know delicious, nutritious things in the raw honey. If I dump that into this boiling water, I'm gonna kill half of it. So I like to make basically an iced green tea, and then to that, I can add my raw honey. And I, I, I mean, I know this is that there's ice cubes floating in this, so I know it's not boiling, but. And then this is going to be a little slower to dissolve just because it's cold tea that I'm dissolving it into, but I really I want to preserve all those benefits of the of the of the raw honey. So I just really want to take my time and get that raw honey dissolved in the cold green tea. This is a stainless steel pot. You can use metal when you when you make kombucha, when you make jun, when you ferment stuff. Buy high quality cookware. This is this is high quality 18.8 stainless steel. This is good stuff. The reason why they tell you not to use metal is because a lot of times, you know, you buy a, a cheap pot at a discount store, there's gonna have aluminum in it, it's gonna come from some far off country where they don't really worry about putting lead into cookware. It's really all kind of questionable. S spend your allowance on good quality cookware and you really don't have to worry about any of that. So that being said, I'm not gonna ferment in this. I'm gonna ferment in a glass container. This is a one gallon Anchor Hocking cookie jar. Um, Anchor Hocking makes these, uh, these are awesome. I love these, I ferment everything in these. They're exactly a gallon. They come with a nice lid, <laughs> well, that we're not gonna use. But look for these. I, I've got a link down below if you wanna pick up a couple of these for your fermenting projects. So let's get our, Cooled, sweetened tea. Into our fermenting vessel. You saw me kind of tip that back a little bit. I've got my Jeune Scoby in here that's got, I don't know, what's it say, 10 ounces of, of liquid with it. So I left a little bit of room for that. Too. Well, this one came from uh, fermentaholics.com and uh, I picked it up on Amazon. So you can grab one of these. I've got the link down below if you want to do this. So, all right, here we are. So as, as advertised, we've got the starter liquid, which you always need. And they, they gave us the little cellulose disc, the, uh, the SCOBY itself. And you can see it sort of floating around in there. But let's cut this open. And right into our nice cool June. All right, we're ready to go. So we've got this gorgeous glass lid. Fail. Do not do this. Don't use this lid. Say this for when you're putting cookies in this jar. We need to make sure that we've got a nice breathable covering. We want to make sure that we want to keep the fruit flies out, keep the dust out, keep the cat out, whatever. I like to use, this is just a tea towel, and um, I'll drape this on here, and then with a rubber band, I can just jump underneath that lip. So I've got a good breathable cover, and it's in place, so nothing will get in there. I'm going to mark the date. Today's the uh, 17th. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this in the, you know where I ferment, I ferment in the laundry room. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the, in the laundry room for about three days. The nice thing about Jeun is that it ferments a lot faster than kombucha. So where I'll usually do my first ferment with a kombucha for about 10 days, two weeks, 
This will probably, if my calculations are correct, will be ready in about four days. So let me put this away to ferment. It can actually do a little cooler too, believe it or not. Even though it's fermenting honey, it will actually take um, a lower temperature. So I don't even have to put it on the seed mat. So my jeune is, is made, I've got my starter in there, and I'm gonna let this ferment for about four days, and then we'll uh, come back to this whole thing and give it a taste. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. It's been about three, four days, and the jeune's been fermenting along nicely. I've got a little bit of a scoby forming. I've got, well here, let me show you a close up. You can see that it's got a little bit of a scoby forming, um, but that's not a real test. I mean, you, here's the scoby. You can see quite a bit of foam has developed underneath it, so you know the yeast is healthy. You can see these kind of brown clumps under here. That's basically just what's called flocculated yeast. It's essentially dead yeast cells. We're not gonna worry about it at all. We're not anxious about uh, the amount of bubbles. I don't see anything that looks like mold. My scoby hasn't really formed. You can see there's just kind of a, a hole here. But that's not the test. That's really not what we're looking for when we're judging this jeune to see if it's fermented. Like I said, that's not the real test. The real test is to take a straw, I just use a reusable one, nudge the scoby off to the side, and then just kind of dip it halfway down in there and get a little bit. I see a lot of people um, using the star to drink right out of the fermenter. I don't like to do that. I don't like to, you know, drink out of that. I'm gonna get a little bit here in my sippy cup and give it a taste. I want a, a very, not very tart, but reasonably tart. I don't want that cloying, sick uh, honey taste that we had a couple of days ago. But this is definitely fermented. I've got a little bit of sugar left, which is what I want, because as we move forward in this process, we need that little bit of honey to keep fermenting, and that's gonna give us the carbonation. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead with this and um, bottle this. In this step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it out of the primary fermenter for, from the first ferment, move it into bottles, flavor it, and put some good tight caps on it. So what are we gonna have to do here? First of all, my hands are very clean. Um, I use natural soap. I don't use detergents or anything like that, or antibacterial soaps. Anything like that is that not only kill the good bacteria on my hands, but potentially put some residues into my, into my beverage here. So not a good thing. Let's save off our little scoby friend. Let's get the mother scoby out of the bottom here. This was that one that we purchased, remember? So he's still in good shape. For the rest of this, I'm just going to strain it through. I've got a nylon strainer and a big gallon pitcher. And I think this is going to make it a lot easier to get some of that flocculin out and also just put it into something that, with a pore spout. Now I'm going to make another batch. I'm going to leave, yeah, a little bit. I usually leave myself about an inch in the bottom of my jar here for the next batch. Put the scobies back in there for the next batch. And didn't really save a lot out, but I wouldn't really want that in my bottles. Not pretty. Let's get this out of the way. I think what I want to do is make two flavors. I've got some crystallized ginger. This is just, you know, candy ginger. Little pieces. And I'm just going to drop a piece in each bottle. Why? One, for flavor, I want to give it a little bit of something other than just the jeune flavor. But also I want, these are, they're, like I said, they're ginger candy, they're crystallized ginger. The crystal is really just powdered sugar that they put on them, or um, you know, granulated sugar. So let's do half a dozen ginger ones. Stainless steel funnel, high quality stainless cookware, go for it. And I'll leave a little bit of headspace. I could have probably filled these. I like to fill them right up to the neck here. If you find that you're getting real big scobies forming in your bottled beverages when you do this, less airspace means less scoby. So if you, if you really want to make sure you minimize the chance of growing a scoby in your drinking bottle, just reduce the amount of airspace. You want to leave some airspace because this is a carbonated beverage, so you need that little bit of space just for the, for the, the buffer kind of of that pressure building up. And then get to caps. 
These are, I think you can recognize where these bottles came from and their lids that say uh, GTS something on the top. You know what I mean. These are good lids. Look, some of them have the nice plastic seal um, and these seal up really nice and just crank the tops on because you want to, this is going to continue to ferment. We added that little bit of sugar on the ginger and this is going to ferment and that's what's going to give us our carbon, carbonated jeune. So nice tight lid. Lacking those, I find they last for a couple of months in the dishwasher. Maybe you could hand wash them. I don't think that you can get the seal cleaned out very well. So I found these on Amazon. I got a link to these below. These are nice. They come with, a, they're just a phenolytic plastic cap, nice hard plastic cap, and you can pop the inside out. And they come with a little removable part here. So you can just put those in and then use these. And you can tell, they actually seal a lot better than these two, I think. So go ahead and, and seal up your ajun in these bottles. This could probably use a little bit more. Now you don't have to make them all ginger. You can make any flavor you want. In fact, here I've got a whole list of things that you can use for your flavors. I mean, take your pick. You can do you know, this ginger. Another thing I'm going to do is uh, hibiscus. I've taken and made just a little concentrated hibiscus tea and chilled it in a bowl of ice water. And then I can strain out the hibiscus flowers. And I stirred some honey into that as well. Because remember, we have to add that little bit of, of what, well, what brewers call priming sugar. ginger in it. And then we can fill up a couple more bottles with our hibiscus jun. So remember, we can't do our flavor step in the first fermentation, in the big jar, because we want to keep a pristine jun. We want our jun scoby, honey, water, and a little bit of green tea. That's all that goes in the big fermenter. When you're bottling, put anything you want in it. Put berries in it. Put, like I did, I made some hibiscus tea. And really the sky's the limit. Make sure you use organic ingredients. Um, make sure that there's no nothing that's going to kill your ferment in them. And you can really have a lot of fun flavoring your jeune. This one could be a little fuller, but I'll take what I can get. All right, and there you have it. So two flavors of jeune. I'm going to let this back in the in my fermenting room, and I'll let this sit for just a couple of days, and I should have carbonated jeune. So. Stay tuned, I'll be back in, in just a little bit with you guys. It'll be two, three days. All right, folks, moment of truth, we did it. We did our first ferment, remember, in the crock, and we fermented our um, green tea and honey with our, with our jeune scoby. Waited about three, four days, waited until we had a little bit of a scoby growth, waited until we had a little bit of acid taste, that little tart taste in the, in the crock. We decanted into the bottles, into the bottles with the tight lids. I think this is key. I've seen a lot of people doing jeun or doing kombucha, doing you know carbonated fermented beverages on here, and they take and put the whole thing into a canning jar with the two-piece lid, you know, with the flat and the ring. It, it kills me because those jars are designed to let out pressure. They're literally, I mean, when you're canning, you fill the jar up with, with you know, your veg, put the little uh, pop top on, and you screw the ring on, take the whole thing and put it into a, a big pot of boiling water or a pressure cooker or something like that. And it literally, as that stuff cooks in the jar, the pressure goes out from underneath the lid, you know, underneath the ring, and you're losing all your pressure. And then as it cools, it sucks the lid down and you get a nice firm seal and it works great for canning. That are crap for making fermented beverages because they're letting all that pressure out. With a, with a lid designed for holding the pressure in, we get carbonation. We get, that's what we're looking for. This is a properly carbonated beverage. This is awesome. This is why I do this. Over some ice, and we've got a delicious carbonated fermented beverage. This is second ferment jeune. Congratulations, guys, we did it. Mm. And with the ginger taste in there, this is good stuff. Not too tart, I still got that nice honey flavor, I've got that nice ginger to complement it. 
You can taste the green tea in the background. You really don't get, I don't like green tea. I don't drink green tea. Just a hot cup of green tea, I do not like. This, it really is the champagne of kombucha. Thanks for watching you guys. Enjoy your jeûne. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Hey, and a shout out to Harry for making me do this. This is good stuff. I hope you enjoy it too. Take care guys. See you next week.